bottom, the bottom of the page 342, where there's a break in the text uh, right there, and in English, where's the first paragraph on 340? For, for reading, I'd like to invite David Cooper and the choir for dancing. David Cooper. Sixth and final aliyah, I'd like to invite as our tour leader, Emily Today, and as our tour professor, Amy Today. Tamo Chishi. six lines up from the bottom, second word, and in the English, the easiest to last paragraph I call. Amen. Shit. 
on Yom Kippur evening, the rabbi noticed little Jacob staring up at the large memorial plaques that hung in the lobby of the synagogue. The seven-year-old had been staring at the plaque for a long time. The rabbi walked up and stood beside the boy, said quietly, good evening. Good evening, rabbi, replied the young, the young boy, focus on the plaque. Rabbi, what is this? asked Jacob. Well, those are all the people who died in the service, replied the rabbi. <laughs> Silently, they stood together, staring at the large plaque. Little Jacob's voice barely broke the silence when he asked quietly, which one, Rabbi? The evening or the morning? <laughs> As your rabbi, I had spent a lot of time at the cemetery. Have you ever walked around the cemetery and read what is written on the markers? I've seen some humorous ones over the years. One read, I told you I was sick. <laughs> this is Emmett, this is true. Uh, one read, nice shoes. And another read, I knew this would happen. <laughs> but usually, usually they say devoted husband or loving wife, cherished daughter. She brought joy into the lives of others or the world was better because he was there. I had never seen carved on a gravestone, he made the Ford list of wealthiest people, or he built the biggest house in the neighborhood. I had never seen a gravestone that said she was a partner in a prestigious law firm, or she had the finest jewelry in town. We don't see these types of things. We don't see the types of things that usually show up on a resume. Jobs held, academic degrees, commendations awarded. But recently, my aunt went to a funeral where they handed out the deceased resume as guests arrived at the chapel. I must say, it was an impressive list of his educational and business achievements, degrees earned, articles authored, positions held. But it was shocking to the guest because it was about what he did, not he was. It said nothing about what he gave. No mention of love or generosity. Albert Nobel was the inventor of dynamite, and he genuinely thought he had done humanity a great good. He thought his invention would bring peace because nobody would be so evil to use this awesome power on other human beings. In 1876, Nobel's brother, Ludwig, died, but the newspapers made a mistake and published Alfred's obituary instead. The headline read, Alfred Nobel, the merchant of death, is dead. Nobel was devastated. He directed upon his death that his entire fortune would be invested in a work for those who advance the cause of humanity, the Nobel Prizes. Most importantly, of course, the Nobel Peace Prize. Nobel had an opportunity most of us never have, to read his obituary in a newspaper and be able to change it. Leslie Wexner, who is the founder of limited stores, the limited express structure, Victoria's Secret. Some years ago, he was hiking in the mountains of Colorado and got caught in a terrible storm. He found shelter, but was genuinely afraid he'd never get off the mountain. It occurred to him that if he died up there, the newspaper would write, Leslie Wexner, retail genius, dies in hiking accident. He did not want to be remembered that way. When he was rescued by park rangers, he returned home and established the Wexner Foundation. It has invested millions 
in Jewish and community charity and politics. Most of us do not want to be remembered only for our professional achievements or even primarily for them. When Bill Gates dies, he'll be remembered more for the amount of money he gave away than for the amount of money he amassed. He left Microsoft to commit itself to this foundation so that he could ensure a legacy of helping eradicate disease around the world so he could make a difference and be remembered beyond the company he built. New York Times columnist David Brooks writes about our need to develop our eulogy virtues in addition to our resume virtues. The resume virtues are the things that get me noticed in the marketplace. My success, my influence, my wealth, my power. I write my own resume. However, others will write my eulogy. What kind of parent am I? What values guide my life? What did I do to bring tikkun, healing, to the world? Eulogy virtues are what the people who matter most will say about me long after I have died. All three men, Alfred Nobel, Leslie Wexner, Bill Gates, wanted to be remembered for making the world a better place. Hundreds of times I've sat with families, so many of you, to share the loss of a loved one. I ask you to tell me about the life of your mother, your father, your grandparent, your spouse, your sister, or your brother, and sometimes tragically, your child. And I listen. I listen for the story of a life, because every life has a story. How did they grow up? Where did they meet and fall in love? How did they cope with tragedy? When were they happier? What were they most proud of? What did they teach you? What did you learn? Every person has a story, and in the best of cases, it is a life built deliberately around the sacred core of values, of character, of ethics. Children, grandchildren, we call the moments of family love and togetherness, the seders, the Hanukkah dinners, the birthdays, bar or bar mitzvahs, weddings. But sometimes we don't see the pattern, the ethic that shaped this life, the love of family, the support of community, commitment to tradition, the value of relationships. Sometimes tragically there is no unity. No sacred core of values at the center of a life. Sometimes a life revealed, a story reveals a life diffused with energies scattered. There's a well-known saying that is particularly meaningful on these high holy days. You live on purpose or you live by accident. Too much of the time, we live by accident. Do we examine our values? Do we know what we really believe? Do we carefully consider our life choices? When we buy a car, we pay careful attention. We take pains to evaluate the alternatives and make an informed and deliberate choice. But constructing a life, we often do impulsively, by whim by rote, by conformity, by accident. Maimonides speaks powerfully about, against living life by accident. He demands that we listen closely to the sound of the shofar, declaring, wake yourselves from your sleep, arouse yourself from your slumber. The shofar stirs us and demands that we ask ourselves, are we living the life we should be? Are we living life with meaning and with purpose? We're so busy. There's so much to get done. Busy with emails, busy with appointments, responsibilities, so many places to go that sometimes we forget where we're going. 
Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes was once asked for a ticket on a train and he couldn't find it. The conductor recognizing him said reassuringly, never mind, sir, I'm sure you have it somewhere. <laughs> Mr. Conductor, replied Holmes, the question is not where is my ticket, it's where am I going? <laughs> that indeed is the question that each of us must ask ourselves. Where are we going? And who do we want to be? The mystics of the Zohar famously ask, what was the sin of Adam in the Garden of Eden? How could God forbid a human being from seeking knowledge? So they taught that there were two trees at the center of the garden, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge, and that the two trees were entwined, growing out of one trunk. And Adam came and he separated the trees, dividing knowledge from life and life from knowledge. And they say that that was his sin, to live without knowledge, without awareness, without reflection. This is one reason for these high holy days, to atone for the sin we have committed by living randomly, by accident, by road, to atone for the sin we have committed by failing to listen to the voice calling us to a higher purpose, to atone for the sin we have committed by forgetting who we are and who we are meant to be. Yom Kippur is an unusual day, besides the fact that you're all here. It's still an unusual day. <laughs> Most of our holidays are celebrated at home. Hanukkah candles, Pesach Seder, the Shabbat table, all at home. But nothing of Yom Kippur happens at home. You're stuck here with me all day long. No distractions, no diversions, no entertainment. You're here with the opportunity to reflect on the most important questions of life. Our other holidays celebrate and commemorate moments from our collective past. Pesach, the exodus from Egypt. Shavuot, receiving Torah at Sinai. Sukkot, our wandering in the desert. But there's no history to this holiday. No story to hide behind. No heroes to divert our attention. Nothing we commemorate and nothing collective. It's not about them about ancestors or predecessors or archetypes. It's about us. And the only past that matters is my past and yours. And the only history that matters is your story and mine. Most radical of all, everything about Judaism is about life. Loving life, protecting life, celebrating life. We say, Lachayim, to life, so for every glass of wine, Except today, this one day a year, when Jews look squarely into the reality of death. Today we acknowledge the most difficult truth about being human, that we die. We are finite, mortal creatures living fragile, vulnerable lives. Our tomorrows are numbered. No one has an infinite supply. That knowledge forces us to set priorities to make our choices important. Pretend for a moment you don't have long to live. To whom we do run to say thank you, or I'm sorry, or I love you. What relationships would you attempt to resolve to repair? What would you be proud of in your life? What would you regret? What would you most miss? Yom Kippur calls us to stop waiting and to act now. I hadn't been a rabbi long enough to know that the saddest, most bitter tears at the graveside are for those are those for the life not lived, the love not shared, for the tenderness not expressed, for the words left unspoken. Today is Yom Kippur. We seek tshuva, repentance, return to our best selves. Today we're spending the day with death. So I begin to wonder, what of me lasts? What will I leave behind? What tells the story of my life? What truth does my life teach?
I want to be that. It's difficult to stand in this place on this day between life and death. It's unsettling. And it's tempting to run away, to escape, to our busyness again, to social media, to obligations, to distractions. But if we stay here and stay focused and pursue these questions, we might just discover wisdom. A wisdom to live on purpose, deliberately, and carefully. Teach us to number our days, wrote the psalmist, to get us a heart of wisdom. On this Yom Kippur, we face the truth of our lives, and we seek insight and courage to begin the new year. We seek strength, vision, and hope, and a renewed sense of gratitude for the blessings that surround us every day. I conclude with a story. Once there was a poor man named Yeppo. And Yeppo, he was a dreamer. Each night he sit at his battered wooden table in his tiny hovel over a glass of weak tea, and he dreamed of treasure. He knew it was waiting for him somewhere. He envisioned all the comforts of power, the respect that his treasure would bring him. But each night when Yeppel would go to sleep, and each morning he'd awaken just as poor as he had been the day before. Until one night he had a dream. And it was the most vivid dream he had ever had. In this dream he saw a bridge in the great city of Krakow, and under the bridge on the banks of the great river was a treasure he waited for his whole life. The dream was so real and the treasure so close that Yeppo woke in the middle of the night, he jumped from his bed, he grabbed his tools, and he headed for the great city of Krakow. As day as dawn broke, he found the bridge and the river and the spot where the treasure was supposed to be buried, just as his dream had shown him. So he began to dig. After some time, a policeman came and asked him what he was doing, digging such a pit. And there, beneath the bridge in the city of Krakow, well, Gekko realized there was no hiding his intention, so he pulled himself from the pit, he brushed himself off, and he faced the officer. And he said, I had a dream last night that at this spot beneath this river, beside, underneath this bridge, lies a treasure meant just for me. <laughs> the policeman laughed. You believe in dreams? I believed in every dream I'd be quite the fool. Just last night, I dreamed a Jew named Yeppel, who lives in a village not far from here. And what that poor fool doesn't know is that a great treasure, a great, great treasure, is buried beneath his own kitchen floor. Hearing his name and the mention of the treasure, Yeppel quickly gathered his tools, he ran home, and sure enough, he dug up the treasure from beneath his kitchen floor. All those years, as he sat dreaming, the treasure was there beneath his feet. It's not out there. What we see from life is not the next treasure to be found, the next accomplishment to be achieved, the next success to be won. It's not in recognition or rewards or accolades. It's right here. If only we are wise enough to look for it. Gamar Hakimatova. May we be sealed for goodness and blessing in this new year. Number, uh, number 10 in your supplements. Number 10. <laughs>
together, bottom of page 354, for our nation and its rulers. We pray for all the local positions of leadership and responsibility in our national life. Let your blessing rest upon them and make them responsive to your will, so that our nation may be to the world an example of justice and compassion. Deepen our love for our country and our desire to serve it. Strengthen our power of self-sacrifice for our nation's welfare. Teach us that our goal is to attain by our own right of conduct. Cause us to see clearly that the well-being of our nation is in the hands of all its citizens. And give us to zeal for the cause of liberty in our own land and of all lands. And help us always to keep our homes safe from affliction, strife, and war. Amen. Prayer for the state of Shield it with your love, spread over it the shelter of your grace. 
provide its leaders and advisors with your light and your truth. Help them with your good counsel. Strengthen the hands of those who defend our holy land. Deliver them. Crown their efforts with triumph. Bless the land with peace and its inhabitants with lasting joy. And let us say, There's about 20 
temple members that are on the CBM board, and also uh, the volunteers that work in the office every day. There are many of those here, too. And then there's, I believe, 16 past presidents. All, all of these people have made a decision to give a little piece of themselves to make this better for all of us. And we owe all of them our gratitude and our thanks. So hopefully after the service, we'll have a chance to, to see them and say thank you. Announcements uh, towards the kids service. Don't forget your kids at the end of the service. Uh, after this, at 1 o'clock, don't forget there's a discussion with and that ought to be very interesting. And then at 2 o'clock is the family tefillah, 4 o'clock, uh, meantime tefillah, and then at 5.15, Yisker uh, and Mila, followed by the breaking of the fast, sponsored by the Tiki. Does that cover it for me? Thank you very much. <laughs> So uh, a couple of little things. First of all, the discussion with Richard Sherman is in the multi-purpose room. Uh, it's not in here so that we don't cut them off when we need to start uh, his services at uh, 2 o'clock. So uh, they'll be in the multi-purpose room. Um, food, 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 right? Uh, you have already brought food for our food drive. Tadaraba, thank you very much. Uh, if you haven't yet brought food for our food drive, we invite you to please do so. You're able to bring more and you've already brought food, that would be great. Um, this morning before services, there were a little over 400 uh, bags of food. It means between now and October 11th, we still have about 600 bags of food to collect. It's a lot of food um, and uh, it takes a lot of uh, uh, deliberate action on behalf of our congregation to actually get that room filled. So please take part and make that happen. <laughs> First, I want to take a moment just to uh, thank the uh, the video team from uh, the service uh, this morning. Um, Don Block and Don Pollock handle the archival videos, and uh, Sandy Bush and Layla Starr seem to have been manning the, uh, the stream. Um, it should be archived, so if you want to, uh, um, I, we already had comments this morning about people who um, were able to access the rabbi's sermon last night. Um, because they weren't able to be here and uh, commented on that. So check it out, let us know what you think. It's a, definitely a work in progress. Um, and we're, we're doing it on a very uh, um, minimal level in order to just sort of get a feel for what it would be like, perhaps to, uh, to expand it into more areas and more services and throughout the year. If you want to pay, pay a special uh, debt of gratitude or and then give, a, give a thanks to our wonderful choir. Uh, we have in the front row here Rita Warshaw, Diane Schuster, Helen Weinfeld, and Janine Mann. Over there we have Gloria Foster, Paul Prochnow, Al Steinfeld, Carol Newchester, Elizabeth Luca, Greta Fox. In our back row are Manly section uh, Steve Gastner, David Cooper, Dean Gerstein, Ralph Cato, and Al Shapiro. And of course our choral director Dr. Um, Charloff and, uh, and Randy, Dr. Randy Polkoy, for his wonderful contributions, not only to this service, but to all our services here at PBI. Uh, I want to also mention uh, Rachel Wan, who unfortunately had to, to uh, leave us a little early today, but uh, her contributions the last few years have been uh, significant and very moving to us all. So we, uh, we end our service in the middle, not quite in the middle, but meaning the service doesn't end, there's no Elaine Mankadish here at the end because the service really continues throughout the day, although we take a, a break in our service till 4 p.m. It starts, it continues at 4 p.m. And so we end uh, our, our gathering this morning uh, with Hayom to Amsenu, which you will find on page 357.